everybody. Welcome back to The Reason We Learn. I'm Deb Philman, mom, homeschooler, individualist. So on my vacation, I did spend plenty of time on Twitter, just the same, because, you know, sitting at the beach, sitting by the pool, you know, I read quite a bit, but I was on Twitter, not going to lie. And I wasn't able to make videos like these. Now, of course, I'm doing a lot of them at once, but um, I did see a recurring theme, and that was terminology being used repeatedly by people on sort of both sides of the woke argument, but simply contradicting each other or, you know, even the people who are anti-woke saying, you know, well, that's not true or kind of mocking it. And it's, it's mock worthy. Don't, don't get me wrong. But I feel like there are vast numbers of people who are just beginning to catch on to this whole woke thing. You know, like, wait, how this is what, <laughs> who, what, everything's white supremacy. I, I'm a race. What? Like, they're just starting to realize that something is not right. <laughs> and this is not just isolated to college campuses or the occasional uber liberal school district or something like that. And I hate to use the word liberal, but left leaning, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this is pervasive. It's happening all over the place and they're just kind of catching on. If they're not on Twitter, um, then it's really foreign to them. But even the people on Twitter, we're falling into kind of two camps, people jumping on the, I'm going to continue to use these terms like I know exactly what they mean and everybody's using them the same way and means the same thing and I'm just going to keep spitting this stuff out like I know what I'm talking about. And it just seems like a whole lot of waste of time, not to mention dangerous because you could end up with people providing material support for something they don't actually agree with. They just never bothered to ask anyone to define the terms. And then even on the anti-woke side, well-intentioned people, extremely brilliant people coming back with fantastic arguments about how something is or isn't whatever they say it is, but still not really taking the time to say, this is what I mean by this term. What the heck are you talking about? Okay. So then it's real easy for these people over here to say, well, you're just a racist or you just, that just proves that you are a white supremacist or whatever. And the person going, well, no, I'm not because blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, maybe say something quick and make fun of them and as I said, you know, in some cases, you know who they are and you know they're being disingenuous and they're bad faith actors and they don't care what the term means to them or anyone. They're just going to spit it out because they know it's incendiary. Fine. They deserve to be mocked and not have anything explained to them. But if you don't see a little blue check next to somebody's name and somebody's just a random person is like, well, I don't understand. I don't like racism. And I know that's terrible if that's white supremacist. Those people need something in the middle. And I believe they are the majority of Americans right now. So I'm going to take on a couple of these terms. I'm going to do my level best to define them. Now, James Lindsay has done a fantastic job of defining these terms. Um, and I think he even calls them something like uh, something from the wokish or whatever. But you should go to um, New Discourses and read some of his long form pieces and even some of the shorter uh, glossary items that explain what the terms mean in the sort of woke terminology. But I'm just going to give you my you know, non-academic mom, uh, you know, interpretation based on what I've seen in terms of curriculum, in terms of teachers, teachers unions, what they mean when they use these terms. They may not even be aware of this is what they mean, but this is what they mean. And I'm telling you this based on how they behave, not so much the words they're using, okay? I'm a big believer in, you know, follow their feet. So people can use terms and then act on certain things and continue to hammer home certain arguments, and that tells me what they mean by a certain term, even if they're not necessarily consciously aware of it. So let's take them one at a time. These are the biggies, okay? White supremacy. You'll see that a lot, you know, what that's this is the foundation of white supremacy. SATs are the foundation of white supremacy. Grades are the foundation of white supremacy. This is upheld by white supremacy. Having uh, high schools that have a test to get into are just held up by white supremacy. This all supports white supremacy. Okay, here's what they actually mean. This is, this is really what they mean. They mean everything that contradicts the notion that we should have equal outcomes let's keep it to education, in academics, in the world of school, K through all the way up, through PhD, okay? Anything at all that would highlight individual achievement, I'm going to call the worst thing I can possibly think of that puts fear in people's hearts that nobody wants to be called that's even worse than racist. 
because it conjures up swastikas and images of skinheads and American history X and, and all that kind of stuff, militias and like the most scary possible thing you can think of, white supremacy, okay? That's literally what they mean. They're, they've just decided racist doesn't go quite far enough and it, it's too possible still for someone to argue that not only white people could be racist. Now, they tried for a long time to say, no, it's not possible for someone who isn't white to be racist, but it wasn't really catching on quite the same way that white supremacy was. So that's really all they mean. If you were to engage them in a debate, if they would allow themselves to be engaged in a debate, which they won't, never will, which tells you a lot, um, and you ask them, define white supremacy. Do you mean literally that the society is ordered to ensure that only white people will succeed, that white people are the supreme people in the society? They always look down on anyone else and the laws and the institutions are organized in such a way to ensure that anyone who isn't white cannot get ahead. Because when you think of the word supreme, supremacy, and you think of literal white supremacists. They exist. Okay. This money, but they exist. That is absolutely what they believe. They believe that white people are better, superior in every possible way. And if they had their druthers, if they absolutely, if they could, they probably would create a society where you had complete separation. Ironically, they have a lot in common with the woke. They would have, you know, everybody who's not white on one side of a fence and everybody who is on the other. And they would not cross paths. They would not do business with each other. It's like, you go over there and I'll stay over here and nobody intermarries. Nobody does that. Okay. That's what white supremacy is. There's no crisscross. There's no intermingling. Now, the reason I know that's not what they mean, even though that is the definition of white supremacy, is that they, they will talk about, you know, affinity groups and they'll talk about, you know, we will segregate and the white people go over here and the, and if you could get away with that, if you can get away with segregating people by race and telling white people what to do, if you can get away with getting any white person, never mind dozens of them, to apologize for their so-called whiteness, if you can get a supermarket to mark things as black owned business and have that be more profitable than something that isn't labeled. If you can, you know, dictate anything to any white person of how they should talk, how they should behave, whether they should have a job or not have a job, et cetera, and get a whole bunch of white people to agree and vote on it and self-flagellate. Oh my God, I'm so guilty. Let me, oh. You do not, by definition, live in a white supremacist country because if you did, none of that would be happening. That would be, those people would be very quickly fired. I mean, it wouldn't take five seconds. They'd be fired. They wouldn't be allowed to self-flagellate. They wouldn't be allowed to apologize. They'd be fired. So even if they were sympathetic to you, they wouldn't have a job more than five minutes. If you tried to get away with that as a person of color or somebody who isn't white, you would be very quickly put in your place. You'd be fired. You wouldn't have a job in the first place. You wouldn't be successful. You wouldn't be winning Grammy Awards. You wouldn't be, you know, making up almost the entire NBA basketball team. No, no none of these things would be occurring. None of these things would be occurring. So what they really mean is what they're just using the ugliest, nastiest term they can think of that will put fear in you that you would be associated with really bad people, okay, bad actors, and they're putting that fear in you so that they can dismantle all the ways we have of differentiating individuals of any race, by the way, so that someone can have individual achievement. This is all at its core Marxist. This is at its core collectivist. The ultimate goal is to tear down anything that allows individual success, anything that allows you to distinguish yourself as an individual. Okay, that's what white supremacy means. That is the definition of white supremacy, whether they know it or not. So that's the first one, okay? Then of course, you probably wonder, well, then what does racist mean if that's what white supremacy is? Well, again, racist is sort of now, ironically, the more mild form of everything I don't like that interferes with my collectivist Marxist agenda is racist. And it has a second meaning. Okay, that's that's sort of what it what it used to mean. And now what they've done is they've taken that over to the white supremacy category. Now everything is white supremacist or is illustrative of white supremacy. Any distinction of any individual, anybody getting a leg up on anyone else, whether it's, you know, 
a leg up that has nothing to do with merit, like nepotism or a legacy getting out of school or somebody, you know, donate a building or somebody, you know, is like, wink, wink, nod, nod, I like you better. That's white supremacy. It's not, it, it, you, there used to be 20 different names to refer to some of the stuff that may or may not be good. Again, I'm not making a value judgment. I'm just saying anything that enables an individual to end up with more than another individual, be it merit or preference, even literal bigot bigotry, which by the way, everyone's capable of, everybody of every race is capable of, is now white supremacy. Even if you're black, you can demonstrate that you are a victim of white supremacy by, you know, distinguishing yourself because you've internalized racism. So let's get back to racism. What is racism? What does it mean? Well, racism is now a catch-all term that we, where we refer to disparities. That's how we talk about the specific disparities now. They are evidence of racism. They're also evidence of white supremacy, but they are racist. So it's kind of weird and it's grammatically incorrect if you think about it to use an adjective like racist to describe an outcome or a statistic. It's, it, you know, so in other words, if you look at numbers of people in prison and you say there are disproportionate numbers of African-Americans in prison versus white people relative to the populations, therefore it's racist. The justice system is racist. It's nonsensical on its face, but that's what they'll do. They'll look at these disparities. The killings of the Asian women and also white and Hispanic people um, in the Atlanta shootings the other day were racist. They were racially motivated because, why? Because of the races of the people. White shooter, most of the people was disproportionate. I guess we're supposed to have like equity or, no, not really equity in this case. I think they would want equality but representative, right? So we'd have like one black person and maybe one Hispanic and maybe one Pacific Islander, Native American. We'd have a whole bunch of white people killed and like a couple of Asian people. No, it's, it, it, then that would be representative and potentially not racist. But because it, it was predominantly Asian, we don't look at the fact that most massage parlors are owned and operated by Asian people, most nail salons too, but he happened to be a sex addict. But we don't look at that. We look at simply the race of the perpetrator, the race, it's all we need to know. It's therefore racist. So we look at one variable, the outcome, and if there is a disparity according to race and the disparity fa seems to favor white people, there are more white people in that situation than black, even if there are black people or even if there are Asian people, even if there are Hispanic people, and especially if there are Asian people, there are too many and they outnumber the black, but then it's racist where the Asians are racist, okay? But not if you get shot. So then we look at that disparity and it is de facto racist simply because the disparity exists. So racism or racist is now what we use to describe disparities that we don't like. We certainly don't describe the NBA as racist because most of the players are black. We don't describe the NFL as racist because most of the players are black. We don't describe, you know, uh, the crimes that are going on where, you know, you'll see rioting, looting by BLM, where most of the participants are black and many of the people they beat up or own businesses or are white. We don't call that racist because it it doesn't favor black people. So racist is what we use to refer to things that do not favor black people specifically, sometimes Hispanics, but pretty much just black people. Only racism can only exist against black people. That's literally what they mean. Now, again, you, you know, people may not know that's what they mean, but that's what they mean. That's what they mean. When, when you watch their feet, when you listen to what they talk about, when you look at the policies they support, that's what they're talking about. So for example, another example, you have this person on the school board in Denver who outed some poor parent who said she didn't agree with BLM in the classroom. I don't want BLM in the classroom. She gave a whole speech. Now she was referring to the curriculum. She was referring specifically to the BLM curriculum. She was referring specifically to the components of the curriculum. I've gone over them on this channel before, which are explicitly racist in the old fashioned definition, which is that where you separate people by race and you say that one, one race is good and one race is bad and so forth and oppressed or an oppressed and everything is seen through a lens of race. It is racial essentialism, therefore racist. And she is talking about how she doesn't like it. So she is criticizing something that has the word black in it and more importantly has black lives matter. And she even said, I don't like black lives matter in the classroom. Now she meant BLM in the classroom curriculum. 
Anybody who's going to stop and think about it for half a second knows that any good faith actor is going to know that. School board president, or not president, school board member is not a good faith actor. He's a member of the Democratic Socialists of America. He obviously has an agenda. He's also a member of BLM, et cetera. And many of the people in his following were going to back him up no matter what. So they purposely twisted her words, but there were probably some people mixed in there who simply don't understand because they've never seen the curriculum that she wasn't saying black lives don't matter. See, it had the word black in there. She was talking about the curriculum. So the fact that she didn't approve of this curriculum and she wanted to be no to be told about it in advance meant that she was racist. She was being racist because she didn't like something that had the word black in it. it I hate to be so simplistic, but that's really what it comes down to, okay? So racist means things that don't favor black people. It's not even things that have a disparity. It's things that don't favor them because when it's a disparity in their favor, then we don't call it racism. We don't call it racist. All right, so let's see what's next. Next thing, I guess we would call, we would start talking about things that are, uh, you know, all the big fancy terms like his, cis heteronormative, miso uh, misogynistic. Um, of course, we never talk about the misandry because men are bad, <laughs> right? It's only misogyny or, you know, cis heteronormative or turf and all these other terms that you'll see, um, you know, colonialist. This is a hodgepodge of terms. Like I could go into what each and every individual one of them means, but you almost never see them used alone. Have you ever noticed that? You don't see them used alone. What you see is you see these terms used usually in big, dense paragraphs of writing, in emails sent home from school, in curriculum descriptions or newsletters from school or newsletters from the diversity, equity, and inclusion department, or whatever it may be, you see the blah, 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 like you get your tongue gets tied in knots just trying to read, even in your own head, the litany of academic sounding terms that don't really seem to mean anything. Well, they don't. I mean, they do. Individually, they do. And James Lindsay did a better job of explaining to you what they mean. But they aren't being used to carry meaning as individual words. What they're being used for, just so you know, so you understand this, because I think once you understand the meaning behind their use, if not the meaning of the specific terms, they will lose some of their power over you. You won't feel so intimidated or so afraid to speak out. This is a pure power play. If I shove a lot of long words that are not readily understandable to the average person or that could have ambiguous meanings or definitions that shift over time or based on who's saying them, etc., this will intimidate a large percentage of the target audience because a large percentage of the target audience is searching for meaning. When they can't readily ascertain meaning, they will begin, I don't know why this happens, but will begin to attribute intelligence, superior intelligence to the person who wrote it, because obviously that person knew what it meant, you don't, therefore they're smarter than you are. It's subliminal in many cases, but that's the goal, is for you to end up feeling subservient or less intelligent than the person who wrote that message. It's a farce. They're not only not more intelligent than you are, they probably don't even know the meaning of the words they are spewing out because they have simply regurgitated them from some talking points and training materials that they got. And this, to sum it all up is, bad stuff I'm not supposed to like if that if I use these terms, it makes me sound really smart and makes the people I'm talking to less likely to challenge me because of it. That's it. And it's simplest terms, utterly, mean, these, are, these words are not meant to carry meaning. So again, while they do have specific meanings, I'm not saying they don't, I'm saying that's not why they're being used. They are, do not believe that the vast majority of people who receive these emails or look at this curriculum for these audiences, the parents who are in the, the San Francisco or LA school district who are reading through these things are by and large not going to sit there and go, okay, let's see, cis normative. Okay, so that means that people who are, who believe themselves to be the, the gender that was, they were born, that's cis, that's normative. Okay, so, and that's, bad <laughs> right okay so that's bad and then you know heteronormative okay so the in if you think that being hetero hetero is normal even in a biological sense okay that's bad too so i mean you could spend 15 minutes sitting there like deriving meaning from each of these words but to what end why did they use them all why didn't they simply say we're trying to challenge norms and customs of the past and create a new normal where anything goes 
and all the things that you were brought up to believe were a reality or not reality anymore. We, we want to create a new reality. If they said that, if they said that to you, you wouldn't be so quick to be like, wait, what? I mean, you know, you, you, you would, I mean, I'm sorry, you'd be quicker to say what? I'm sorry. Uh, hang on a second. Who decided this and why and when did we decide that these things were bad? And moreover, why did we decide that you, the school, are in charge of teaching this stuff to our kids? Because values are supposed to come from home and you're supposed to teach knowledge, information. You're supposed to help our kids, get, you know, learn the thinking skills so that they can go out and engage with this values-based material independently and decide if they want to, you know, incorporate it into their lives and in their belief system. You're not supposed to teach it as fact, but how could they get away with that without having that little conversation with you if they told you what they really were trying to do? They couldn't because even the average eighth grader knows that we've just decided that we don't like the way life is organized and the way the society is organized and what traditions are and what most people believe. So the way we're going to change it is we're going to just change it and we're just going to say that these things are bad and, um, you know, normal is bad and anything that was biologically, you know, standard is bad and we want to be accepted and venerated and validated and for our choices and our beliefs. So we're just going to teach them to your kids. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Is that all right with you? You would pitch a fit. Most people would. Most rational people would say, yeah, that's not your job. But the way they get away with that is they load up all the material with these big, fancy sounding, long, multi-syllabic words that the average person just goes, okay, that sounds really technical and scientific, so I'm just going to like let it go. That's why they do it. That's what it means. That's the meaning of it. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you is the real meaning of these terms. So that takes care of all the blah, 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 long words that you'll see over and over, almost always used together, at least in threes, at least in threes, more often in five odd numbers. Just count them up next time. Um, anyway, let's see. What else do we have? Those are the most common ones. We are going to see white supremacy all over the place, but that's why they do it. And the reason it's so dangerous, like I said, is it masks the, the larger agenda, which is to devalue the individual, to make sure that you begin to be afraid of distinguishing yourself and of your children distinguishing themselves. Unless, of course, they're black. That's okay. <laughs> then it's okay. Because white supremacy only applies to a black person trying to distinguish him or herself in something that is not approved of by the collectivist Marxist, you know, whoever they are woke people. So for example, if you would like to distinguish yourself as the latest, greatest author of victimology literature, that's fine. If you want to distinguish yourself as a trainer, you know, DEI trainer, also fine. If you want to distinguish yourself as somebody who is an outspoken critic of white people, knock yourself out. You can be the best of the best. You can get a tippy top A plus prize for that. You could be Nicole Hannah Jones, win a Pulitzer, as long as you are being as you know, critical and judgmental and quite frankly, racist as you possibly can be, that's fine. But if you want to distinguish yourself as somebody who does the opposite and you're black, that's not okay. Now you're supporting white supremacy. If you want to be Shelby Steele or agree with him, you want to be Thomas Sowell or agree with him, you want to speak out on behalf of anything traditional whatsoever. If you call yourself a conservative black person, you are going to be lumped in with the white people now. So that's why I say white supremacy doesn't really necessarily mean white. It just means all the things that interfere with our ability to put, first of all, black people up here and everybody else down here, but more importantly, elevate Marxism. Because if Marxism becomes the way we run things in this country, what will very quickly happen to the second it really takes hold, like if it's, you know, just the way we run everything, the people now, the Ibram X Kendi's and the, you know, the, the black people that are being elevated, unless they're entertainers, and then it's okay, will find themselves falling very far, very fast, because they no longer will be useful. They really ought to read up on Lenin. But that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to go into this because it was really rattling around in my brain and I thought it was important to talk about these things. As I said, please refer to the much more in-depth definitions on James's site. Um, he goes into the, you know, the history of these things and so forth and may or may not even agree with what I'm saying. I, again, I'm trying to talk to you parent to parent, mom to parent <laughs> or mom to mom, um, 
individualist to individualist, what is the meaning behind the use of the terms? So if you like this video, comment this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. That is the video.